What's up guys? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to sync your data from your watermelon database and your React Native app to your Superbase backend. Okay, so you have some records created, you know, so you have a workout app, you have some workouts logged and you want to um, sync that data, or, uh, send it to the server so it can be accessed anywhere and backed up and, wh and whatever. So Within Watermelon, you have a synchronized function, and that's what we're looking at here. And this is, uh, you know, kind of in its simplest form. Um, the synchronized function, you'll pass in your database, and then you'll have a pull changes and push changes. And pull changes is going to be you pulling in all the new changes. So if somebody uses the app on multiple devices, anything that was, uh, that's been pushed to the server, you're gonna pull in here. And then the push changes is anything that they do on the device. So if they log another workout or make changes to you know, an exercise, if, if we're going through this workout app idea, um, the push changes is gonna send whatever changes they made to the server. Um, so there's a few things to know here. Um, the first, we'll, we'll go into pull changes. What we're going to do is we're going to need to create a Postgres function and call it from Superbase. So this is our Superbase instance that we've created in our app, and this is how we call a function. So we have we we have this pull function that we're going to call for pull changes and a push function that we're going to call for when we want to push changes to the server. For this, we're sending the last pulled at time to the server, and we're also sending, this would be like an, a, an array of, of tables. And you don't have to do that, but the reason I'm doing that is because there may be some tables on the... Uh, server that I don't want to pull. I don't want to pull everything. So I may have, say, 10 tables on a device and 14 on a server. I just want to sync, you know, a certain table. So I just send, um, and, you'll, and you'll see when I show you the function where that comes into play. So this last pull that is stored in Watermelon and, and, and like local storage within the Watermelon database. So whenever you call this pull changes, last pulled at is updated with the current time. And then you go down, so pull changes will be called, and as long as there's no uh, errors, then push changes will be called. You see it gets past the changes <clears throat> object, which is all anything that's changed since uh, the last time a... Uh, you know, the synchronization was called, and I last pulled at. And what you'll notice is pull changes returns data from the function. So whatever we pull, we'll return those in, in Superbase, or sorry, Watermelon will um, update the records uh, according to what we return. But push changes, there is no return. So the thing you'll run into pretty quickly is that these pull, the pull changes will happen. You'll get your newest data. You'll push your new changes to the server. And then your timestamp is still at pull changes. So your timestamp is before the push changes. So you do a pull, you do a push, and then on your next pull, you're going to get back all the changes you just pushed. And there, you could, there's a few things you could do. You could just ignore it. Um, it could also be useful, say, if you update uh, all the records for some reason on the server. Like, um, if you don't, say, you don't use Watermelon's uh, auto generated IDs for the records. So then, you know, you push to the server, you update. IDs and then you and then on the next and then you just you would just call pull changes again. So this synchronization call, you would just call it immediately a second time, and then you would pull back 
down, you pull back into the app everything you just pushed plus the changes that your server makes every time you push it. So that's just uh, you know something to keep in mind when you're when you're implementing this. Now, let's look at what we're going to do on the server. What's, what's what we're going to do within Superbase? So our pull changes is going to look something like this. Let's see what's going on here. So this top half that I've highlighted here, that's going to be our pull function. So when we call this super base function pool, what we're really calling, we're passing our collections, our, uh, that's like our, uh, an array of table names, and our last pulled at timestamp. And we're passing that into this function. And what this is going to do is it's going to get the current timestamp, so we can return that. And then we're going to return a changes object. And this changes object, has a specific structure that it has to match and this is dictated by watermelon so it's got to be an object and and it's going to have a created which is going to be an array of any um, records that have been created since the last update the last pool changes updated which is going to have all the records that have been updated since the last pool changes and deleted which is going to have an array <clears throat> an array of IDs only. It doesn't have, it's not records, it's just string IDs. So remember that. Um, <clears throat> and it's going to put that together through our collections. So you see this collections is what I pass in here from our table names. And what we're passing into uh, here, see this, this is three different functions. So we're going to break this out into a created function, updated function, and deleted. And we're going to pass in, for each one, the user ID and the table and the last pulled at. And so if you look down here, this is a general idea of what each of those functions will look at, look like. It's going to be... Um, selecting all the records where the user ID matches the user ID. So why, why is that there? Well, if you have a workout app and you're, you, you know you have one database for all your users, um, you only want to get their own records, not you know everybody's records in the, in the, in the whole database. So you check where the user ID matches uh, the ID you pass in. And this, so you don't, so you, you can't tell from what I got in here, but uh, you know, on this create, update, and delete, user ID comes from Superbase. Um, and in any of the functions, you can call auth dot, I think it's dot UID, and then you'll get the user ID um, of the user that's calling that function. So, back down here, user ID um, and not deleted at. Deleted is null. So for created and updated, you want to make sure that you're checking for deleted is null. Because a record could be updated, but it could also be deleted because you're, you're not actually going to delete the record. If you think about it, if you have a record with the ID of 10 on one device, a record with the ID of 10 on another device, now say device number two deletes record of, with the ID of 10, and you sync that to a server, you can't delete it from the server because if you just delete it, then this other device won't know what happened. So you, so you mark that field as deleted, so then when the next device, when, when the first device syncs, it can see, based on that deleted at field is not null, that, uh, that it needs to remove that field because it was deleted by the other device. So for created or updated, 
you got to make sure you do deleted at is null. And for, you know, getting all the deleted IDs, deleted at will be not null. So, and you're going to check and see when the server, what, what this, this server created at is uh, an automatically created timestamp in Superbase. Every time a record is created, Superbase will add the time it was created. So this will be if server created at is uh, after the last sync time. That's what this number two is. So we'll do the same thing for updated. Well, the server is updated at after the last pulled at timestamp. So this will be ran for every table that you pass into this fu into the function. So that's that's the gist of pull changes. Now, whatever you implement will, will probably be a little bit different than this, but, th but it should give you an idea of, of how to do that. So let's talk about push changes. Now this will be what we call when we do the push changes. So now's a good time to talk about why are we doing Postgres functions instead of just updating the records um, using the Superbase library. So if, say for example, let's go back here on push changes. Why why we, why call push changes a, as a function at all? Why not just use super base and just update all the changes. One main reason, there's a few different reasons, but one main reason is that you need the updates to run in a, in a trans, in one transaction. This section here and this section here is checking to see if a record was created or updated between when a record, when a pull changes happens and a push changes happens. So why is that important? Well, if you pull changes and then the app is up to date and then that record changes again and then you push changes, you're going to be out of sync. The easiest way to handle that is just if there's anything that's been updated since the last pull that time. Now, this won't happen a lot, but, but it may happen some. Because remember, pu push changes is called immediately after pull changes. But when it does happen, you just need to throw uh, an error or raise an exception. And that way, the transaction rolls back, nothing is, is saved, and then this... We get so then we get this error. For, like we'll have a you know with, with the way Superbase works, you get the data or an error. So if we raise an exception in the Superbase function, we'll have an error here. And if there's an error here, then we need to um, throw an error. And what that means is Superbase will will exit out of here. I'm sorry, not Superbase. Watermelon. Will exit out of the sync, and these changes will still be marked internally in Watermelon as um, whatever the status is, waiting to be synced. So, so that we can try again. So we'll we'll try again, which means we'll call pull changes first. So now we'll get all those new changes that happened in between the last pull and push, and then we can and then we'll call push changes again, and then everything will sync fine. So that's what's <clears throat> going on here. Um, you know, we're just checking to see, and, and I suspect we're just checking to see if any record has changed between a pull and a push changes. And you'll probably have something similar in your code, m maybe not the exact same. So next, we're going to handle all the created and updated. So, um, for each table and each record within those tables that uh, we're going to try to insert into the database. And when we try to insert, we may have a conflict on the ID. And what that means is that the record already exists 
in Superbase. So in that case, we don't need to insert, we just update it. So then we update um, all the new, you know, update all the new records or all the new fields in that record. And Watermelons doesn't send only the fields that change. When, when a field changes in a record, it sends the entri entire record. Then you'll need to handle the deleted. So that's what this is doing down here. Now for deleted, remember we're not actually deleting the record in Superbase. We're just updating the deleted at field. So, um, <clears throat> and Watermelon's not going to send us the whole record. Watermelon is just going to send us the ID. So we'll, we'll, we'll set deleted at to the current time and uh, based on the ID that gets passed through there. That's basically the gist of it. Um, your guys' apps will probably vary some from this. I know I've implemented this in a couple different apps, and they all vary a little bit. So your back end may be different. Um, you may need to do different things to the records before you update them or create them. Um, this looks very simple here and it is will be pretty simple could be pretty simple but also you may need to do other things so you may need to you know massage some data a little bit before you pull it into the watermelon database and you also um will want to you know wrap this function in a, in a try catch um so you can and then retry it if it fails you know how i mentioned about you know, failing, um, raising exception on the push changes. So, so that way you at least retry twice, uh, or at least retry once, um, if not another one. And then the other thing is you may want to, uh, debounce this function. So it only gets called, um, every so often. See, the thing about watermelon is you decide when you want sync to be called. So, if, it, if you're calling it all the time, anytime anything changes, um, <clears throat> like, like this is what you can do. So there's a listener on Watermelon Database, and you can listen to any time a change happens. And any time a change happens, you can call the sync function. And the other cool thing is you can have real time on Superbase, and you can listen real time to the entire database or, or whatever tables you want inside your app so whenever something changes in the app you can call the sync function and whenever your super base listener tells you that something changed on the server then you can call the sync function again and you don't have to do that you know you can decide how, what works best for your app but if you do something similar to that you may get a bunch of sync calls right in a row and watermelon will, will tell you hey like you know chill out because you can only call a sync one at a time you gotta wait for one sync to finish before you call the next one so there's uh there's a couple ways you can handle it like what i like to do is i just um have a little flag and i set it sync in progress and then do all this stuff and then when that's done i set sync in progress to false and that's just a simple way to not call sync when a sync is already happening. Also, it gives you the option um, to show something in the UI if, if you want to when something is syncing. So that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can leave them in the comments, and I'll do my best to try to answer them.